Hello, welcome back once again to Infinite Jeff, the project where I, Jeff, read the book Finnegan's, I'm sorry, Infinite Jest, one page at a time, one day at a time, kind of, sort of, that's the, I that, that's the idea, but it doesn't always happen that way, so, kind of playing in catch-up mode, that's why I'm doing seven of these fuckers today, eight Jeff Finnegan's Wakes, 15 pages, did not, do not want to do this, but I want to get caught up so I can get caught up. That's right. I'm getting caught up so I can get caught up. Anyway, this is page number 317. Here we go. Then proximity to his brother. Avril remembers Mario still wanting Hal to help him with bathing and dressing at 13, an age when most unchallenged kids are ashamed of the very space their sound pink bodies take up, and wanting the help for Hal's sake, not his own. Despite himself, and showing a striking lack of insight into his mom's psyche, Hal fears that Avril sees Mario as the family's real prodigy, and inbent <laughs> it does show a lack of insight into her psyche, an inbent sav savant type genius of no classifiable type, a very rare and shining thing, even if his intuition, slow and silent, scares her. His academic poverty breaks her heart. The smile he puts on each AM without fail since the suicide of their father makes her wish she could cry. This is why she tries so terribly hard to leave Mario alone, not to hover or ring, to treat him so less specially than she wants. It is for him. It is kind of noble, pitiable. Her love for the son who was born a surprise transcends all other experiences and informs her life, Hal suspects. It was Mario, not Avril, who obtained Hal his first copies of the unabridged OED at a time when Hal was still being shunted around for the assessment of possible damage, Boo-Boo pulling them home in a wagon by his bicuspids over the fake rural blacktop roads of upscale Weston, months before Hal tested out, uh, at, tested out at whatever's beyond eidetic on the mnemonic verbal inventory designed by a dear and trusted colleague of the moms at Brandeis. It was Avril, not Hal, who insisted that Mario live not in uh, HMH with her and Charles Tavis, but with Hal in an ETA subdorm. But in the year of the dairy products from the American heartland, it was Hal, not she, who, when the veiled legate from the union of the hideously and improbably deformed showed up at the ETA driveway's porticullis to discuss with Mario issues of blind inclusion versus visual estrangement of the openness of concealment the veil might afford him, it was Hal. Even as Mario laughed and half bowed, it was Hal brandishing his Dunlop stick who told the guy to go peddle his linen somewhere else. We got a page break. It's the 30th of April slash the 1st of May, year of the dependent adult undergarment. Be nice when I don't have to say that anymore. The sky of USA's desert was clotted with blue stars. Now it was deep at night. Only above the USA city was the blank sky blank of stars. Its color was pearly and blank. Marath shrugged. Perhaps in you is the sense that citizens of Canada are not involved in the real root of the threat. Steeply shook the head in seeming annoyance. What's that supposed to mean? He said. The lurid wig of him slipped when he moved the head with any abrupt force. The first way Marath betrayed anything of emotion was to smooth rather too fussily at the blanket on his lap. It is meaning that it will not of. All right, that was page number 317 of Infinite Jests. Good night.